G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I've got a brand new project for you all and I've had so much fun making this one, designing this one for you all. And it is the sweetest little pin cushion cottage and it's made entirely out of felt and it's actually very simple to make if you've got a good pattern. I've got one of those for you, of course, and it's free. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below and you can download your free pattern templates. Now make sure when you go to print those out that you set your printer settings to print at actual size and then those pattern templates will be absolutely as right as rain. So let's get busy sewing. So let me show you the things you're going to need to make our lovely little cottage here. Now I've made mine up in felt um, and I think that's the best material for it. So I have my main pattern piece. Everything is done on this little pattern piece before we fold it up and turn it into our little house. As you can see that's what will happen. Um, and this piece of felt it has fusible woven interfacing, a medium weight on the back. When I cut that piece out I also lightly rule in my lines that create that little base. It just makes it easier for when we're gluing on our little uh, support panels here. So make sure that you get that done. And then you'll also need two little roof panels. Now, the colors that you choose for this little project, what's great about this project is just the colors can be incredible. You can also go very um, traditional. You could make it up in cream with a little thatched roof color and keep it all very natural. I'm gonna go for color as I, as I often do and just make sure that your roof is quite a contrasting color because we really want that roof section to show up and be nice and bright and obvious. So again, we're going to need um, some, uh, this one we're going to make up in double felt. Now these are our little eaves. So a little section here, you'll see that your pattern piece is just a rectangle strip. It's cut from double felt. Double felt is two pieces of felt joined together with fusible webbing. Um, and I've actually got a video that shows you how to do that. I'll put that link up there. It sh shows you how to treat all of your felt ready for sewing. And we actually cut that one and then I just trim the edge with my pinking shears to get that little effect. So that's very sweet. And then we're going to need all of our pattern pieces. Now, if you want to make this little project up and you were hoping to use a print in fabric, I guess it's possible to do that, but you would need to make up felt fabric, which is where you fuse your fabric onto a piece of felt using heat and bond fusible webbing and then cut your pattern piece from that. It, you will get a little bit of uh, a raw edge on the edges but it will still work pretty well if you particularly wanted a print for this part um, you can go ahead and do that I'm going to stay with the felt um, so and then same with our details of course you can use fabric for all your details you can do little swatches of fabric whatever you like and what I've given you here are just the basics this little house you could put absolutely anything on this little house um, so long as it's all done at this stage when it's in this flat section. I've tried to keep it nice and simple for you all, um, but you can add to that any way you like. Of course, you can add an extra window. You could even put a, an extra window in the roof. Um, but this is, this is just the basics. So you've got something to work with. You could, you could do all sorts of embroidery. You could um, do a little climbing ivy up around the windows would be really lovely. So all of you like to embroider. This is a great little project So then we've got our little our little pieces. So our little details We've got our little front door Which is offset because we've got our little plant that is next to that one and So I put my little back door right in the center because that's all I've got on that back panel um, having that one offset allows me to add my little pot with my my little plant. Now we're going to call this flower a sunflower because it's quite huge. But I didn't want to make it too small for, for you all. I don't want it to get too fiddly. So let's call it a sunflower. That's what we'll go with. Um, and that it still looks very, very pretty. So I like to have a little bead for the center of that one. Um, I also need my windows, so my little side windows on each panel and then my little arched window at the top. 
So that's the basic layout for mine and it, and it is worth laying out your little uh, house with all its pieces so you get a good idea of the colour balance. I just got a, tiny, a couple of tiny little black uh, buttons for my door handles and I need my support. So this is what holds this little, um, this little project up and makes it nice and boxy and firm. So you can see it's got no give in it at all and it's got a base and the, and the sides. So that's what keeps it nice and straight. If you think I might make this up without the supports, what you'll end up with is, is a ball. It's just a colourful felt ball because it will just blow out and you won't have any definition at all. We can't put any support here because of course this is where our pins go if we were using it as a pin cushion. So it definitely won't work without the supports. Now the, the cardboard that I use is matte board. It's matte board that's used in picture framing and I get mine from my local picture framers and I buy his a little off cuts and cost me a few dollars just for a big bag and uh, this is the best, the best cardboard to use for these sorts of projects. It's got absolutely no give in it. Um, and so that's the one to use. So you need your two side pieces and you need your two window panels and your base piece. They're all glued on on the reverse side when we get to that stage. Now to sew this little project up, I'm actually using pearl thread and I'm using just a, an eight ply uh, this time and I'm matching it to my colors. But of course you can contrast. If you're not feeling very confident with your blanket stitch, perhaps match it and it won't be so obvious. Um, but I'm gonna go with the purple right throughout. Ideally, when we sew this top line here, it's good if the color can match the, the roof color. So you'll also need some clear craft glue and this one is just a quick drying uh, gel consistency. People have been asking me about my craft glue. It's just a standard quick, quick drying glue um, but it does have a gel like consistency. It means it won't seep into the fabric and it is suitable for fabric and it won't uh, and it does dry quite quickly. So we need some of that. You will need to have your ruler handy so that we can line up all our little pieces ready for pressing. A pair of forceps will be really handy and as will a wool felting needle. That helps us pack the, the filling. We're going to have this one is filled with some polyester filling and if you like, um, I have a little bit of rice in the bottom of mine because I like that extra bit of weight. It's really got some substance to it. So a little bit of rice there. Um, you can always use a very fine aquarium gravel if you didn't want to use rice. Um, and polyester filling and that's about that. So our first step is going to be we're going to start adding our little details and we do that a little bit at a time. So let's remove everything that we're not going to be pressing on right now. We're going to start with our white pieces. Now I do use white for my all of my door frames and my windows. Um, I just find that that gives me a really crisp little backdrop for my, my other little colours. Now when we're lining these up, we want to make sure that's you got your ruler across there about so that's where your base is so I like to just sit mine press mine into place maybe just one or two millimeters above that and you have to remember that we're sewing that side seam with a blanket stitch so we need room for that so just to that side and we also need room for our little pot plant so make sure that where you're laying everything there's room for the others to come so stitching this side so a little plant will fit in there nicely and it's just a matter this one just sits right in the center so it's just a matter of lining them all up and making sure that when you're centering something that it's the same distance from either side likewise for these little panels now the little window panels, they actually sit two centimeters from this top edge here. 
So this is the base and this is the top edge. So two centimeters. So make sure it's exactly two centimeters and that it is nicely centered. And the same with your little door, make sure that it is nicely centered. Again, check exactly where the base is and situate that one just about two millimeters higher. So using a hot iron and a protective cloth always when we're dealing with felt, because if you're using acrylic felt, um, it needs definitely needs a protective cloth. So we're going to press those into place and then we're going to start um, sewing them on. Now you could of course hand sew this whole little project. Um, I'm actually going to be doing it all on the machine this time because for the sake of time and uh, so I feel the need for speed. So I'm going to be sewing around each of these little pattern pieces very close to the edge in a matching thread once they are pressed on as you can see there my stitching around there so initially I'm starting with all my white pieces press them on stitch them on if you're going to sew it by hand you'll want to do a little blanket applique stitch and that will sew those on nicely so that's our first step we can go ahead and do that one and there I have my little white pattern pieces pressed on. If I didn't mention it before, of course, all of your little pieces that go on, they have um, a fusible webbing applied to the back of your heat and bond paper. So our uh, next step, now that they're nicely stitched on, you can see how nice and neat that machine stitching works. So if you do want to do it quicker, um, take your time and uh, make sure that you match up your threads, change your threads, uh, often and uh, you'll get a lovely clean result. So our next step is to go ahead and do exactly the same thing and we're going to press on our second layer which is our little interiors. So we've got our little doors. Now the doors sit level with the bottom of the door. So that one will go there and my little back door and then you've got make sure that your little windows are nicely centered you don't have to use black in the center of these windows you might want to use a little print to make it look like curtains which would be really cute too um, so and then the top little one there just make sure that there's the same space all the way around it we will go back using our hot iron and protective cloth press those into place and then I will stitch around each of those black for my windows. So I'm matching my matching my colors, my threads to my fabric and the same with the little brown one. Now when I'm stitching my doors on, I'm also going to not just stitch around it, but I'm going to add a couple of lines just so it's got that little timber paneled sort of look you can see on the back. It's all that little bit of extra detailing that you can do that really does make all the difference. So I will be stitching those little lines on as well. So we can go ahead and that is our second step. Right, so what you can see there is that I've done all my stitching. My little doors are all done. Everything's nicely in place. And I've also added my little pot there, remembering to keep room on this side. Now my next step is to press on my little leaves. So my little leaves just sit either side there. Again, remembering not too close because we've still got that seam and we're going to be stitching a line straight up two times back and forth in my green thread and at the same time I'm going to go to the end of each of those leaves just to mark in that little stalk and stem. So once your little leaves are pressed on, stops everything moving around, just check the position of your little flower. I have the little... Uh, the little divot up so that my stalk can go straight up into there and it's just a matter of I make a little spot here and the little spot here underneath that flower and I take my stalk up just where it's really going to be hidden there and I find that you can do that by hand of course with your embroidery thread but I'm going to do that one very carefully on the machine and then I'll show you how I add that little flower so now that my little stalk is in place, I'm now going to show you how I add my little flower. Now I've got some extra strong uh, top stitching thread um, and I've got it in a deep gold colour. Of course you can just use, is embro use embroidery floss if you like. So I've got my little flower and it's just sitting just over that little stalk there. 
and now you can see I've made a little dot right in the center there and I'm just going to come in from behind I've got a knot in the end of my thread come out right on that little center mark there and then I'm going to dive in right in the center of those two petals there and I'm going to pull that one in nice and tight and then I'm going to go to the next one in between those petals and back into that center point again again pull that in nice and tight that's just going to pull those petals up a little bit and the other side and then the final one at the base and back into the center and then I just like to add about halfway up each petal right in the center and back into the middle again just to give it just that little bit more detail of course you ladies or gentlemen who embroider I'm sure you can do something quite wonderful on this little house love to see little tiny little bullion roses all over it that would be lovely I'm trying to keep things nice and quick for you all and then you can be very creative on your own project so now that I've got all those sectioned in you see it's just given that little bit more definition I'm going to find my little bead I'm just going for a little gold bead And I'm going to come up the centre again. And I will catch that little bead. Right in the middle there. Make sure that's just sitting right. encourage it and then I'll just go through one more time and just knot off at the back and now my final step on our, our little house detailing is to add our little crosses on our windows now there's a couple of ways that you can do that you can just take it to the machine mark it out and stitch a couple of times in white but I wanted it to really stand out more on my first sample I did it on the machine but I wasn't entirely happy about how bold it was so I went for a nice pearl thread again but this time in white and I've doubled it I've got a knot in the end and you can see you might be able to see on there that I've put in my center mark and I've also put in the corresponding marks at the edges there. I've done it in a little white gel pen. So I'm going to take my needle, come in from behind and come out right on that centre mark. And then I'm simply going to take my threads to the first mark. See how I'm making sure that they're not twisted? If I put my thumb right there on the end where it's going to go in, then I stop those threads from twisting as I pull that one through. We want those nice and straight. And then you can see I can come up the other side to the other mark. Flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure that my threads aren't twisted before I go back into that center point right where I started if they are it's just a matter of flipping it up and it does make a difference to the overall look having those come parallel to each other and that one's nice and straight and then I'll go 
to this side now because they're quite long stitches make sure you're not really pulling them in tight we just want them to lay nice and flat I'm going to take that on again back into that center and then the final one and it's quite a quick and easy way to put them in too I actually find this easier than even stitching it on the machine and I just prefer that result that final stitch Again, lifting up my threads. There we go, and we've got a nice little window frame there. So it's just a matter of knotting off at the back, and then you just repeat the same thing with the other window and pop your little marks in on your top little arch window, and that's done in exactly the same way. So that's all of our detailing done on our little cottage and so our, our next step before we, start to before we start to assemble this one is we add our little roof flaps and they go on the side here and you'll find that they line up beautifully and we're going to be sewing just a five, four to five millimetre seam and we have to make sure that's nice and accurate because of the way that it's all put together and we're just going to be stitching just this seam here and make sure you back and forth on the start and finish and keep that nice and straight and then when we open that one out we're going to press that seam open and flat makes it easier for us putting it all together so so both of those little roof flaps on now now there you can see my little roof pieces are stitched into place and those seams are nice and flat so our next step is to add our little supports so a little cardboard support so we've got our clear craft glue and I just glued up the back of the little back section there and made that make sure I've got my glue right to the edges and it's just a matter of lining up this little one now we want it to sit probably about four millimeters from the baseline this is why we ruled in our little lines earlier and we want the same space right around the top edge because remember this is where we're going to be sewing so we want to give ourselves plenty of room for that so what I do is I go around and I glue and press each one on this side now our little side panels you'll find that they will sit again just about four millimeters from that little line make sure it's the same either side and it should just sit level with that little seam line there the edge of your pressed out seam there so I'm going to go ahead and press each of those little panels on and then we're going to flip it over and press it out so once I have all of my little pieces in place, I've pressed them down from this side, then I can just flip that one over and really take the time to go around and press carefully right to each corner and along every edge to make sure that they're really, really glued nice and firm there. Especially at your little points and your corners. So there's no lifting when we go to fill that one now it's important that this is absolutely dry now before we move forward so we're going to put it aside I might just put it out in the Sun on the windowsill for a little bit and let that get really really dry before we move forward to our next step so I've got my little uh, 
little cottage piece is out there getting dry and you'll notice that I've got my little base piece that doesn't go in until we've sewn up the little side seams so we just keep that one put aside. So while that's drying we might take a look at our little little trim on our roof. Now there's a few ways that you can do this and what I've done with this one is I've kept it quite plain. So as I said you get your little rectangle piece and just trim that one up with your pinking shears if you have them and you can see there that I've kept it all very plain and I have before I've popped that on I've actually hot glued these two into place. Um, you can still if you're feeling ambitious you can stitch it on. Um, I find it I get a nice tight very clean finish if I hot glue it on and felt is very happy to make friends with hot glue and so what I did on on this little one was before I hot glued it on I just sewed on the machine I don't know if you can see that just a straight stitch a little top stitch along that top edge just to give it a bit of finish but this time I'm going to go for a little tiny blanket stitch that I've done across there so just for a little bit more detail now you could also add to this little one you could add a little piece of lace trim if you like and that looks equally as nice it depends on the style of your little cottage but if you were doing it all in shabby style of course it's just another way to add a little bit of uh, detail there but maybe a tiny pom-pom trim would be nice any little braid that you've got also rick rack um, this one would look fabulous made up to look like a gingerbread cottage as well you can make that quite Christmassy and you could uh, substitute your little potted flower there for perhaps some holly or maybe a little wreath on the door would be very sweet but you can see there's so many different things you could do alternatively if you don't want to do the little felt eaves there and you have a suitable lace or trim you can just glue that one on when that one is done and it, you need it to be just a little bit longer but that will work just as well so so many ways that you can do those so you can go ahead and and uh, treat those edges of your little trim any way that you like once our little uh, disassembled little house is all dry those panels are nicely in place we can start to put this little one together so this is the exciting part now you'll find that as you fold up your sides there you can see that your little corner here where your roof starts to drop away that little corner will meet up with that center seam there should fit absolutely perfectly there and because it's all structured like it is you find it's actually very easy to line everything up so we're going to start doesn't really matter which side I always, I always start with the front on the left hand side so we open this one out I've got my single strand of my pearl thread in my matching color and I'm going to be starting at this corner so what I, I want to hide as many of my knots as I can so I'm actually going to take my needle and I'm going to go into that felt between those two layers so I'm, I'm going underneath the interfacing and I'm not it's not showing through the other side so that's how I'm going to hide my little knot inside the little house so now I'm going to fold that one up now the stitch we're going to be doing is a blanket stitch if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before I'm going to put a little link up the top there to my tutorial that shows you how to sew a blanket stitch but you're going to see me do a few here so I'm just making sure that that one's all lined up so I'm going to make sure you really understand how to put this together now so there's no mystery so there's my little thread coming out so I'm going to come in right close to that my stitches are going to be quite small probably around about three millimeters so my first stitch is just going in right on the base there you can see blanket stitch we go through both layers equally the same and we bring our needle out through the loop so there's my first stitch I'm going to go straight over the top of that stitch again just to really secure that base there we go 
So I'm, I'm holding my thread over my finger there to keep it out of the way and you can see it's really easy to hold it. You don't need to pin it, clip it or anything like that. Make sure that your edges are nice and even and remember when we're sewing our blanket stitch, because this stitch is going to be seen on both sides of our little house, you want to make sure that you're going into your fabric and you're going in straight through that seam. You don't want to be going in at an angle either way. You want to be going through absolutely straight and that'll keep your little stitch completely the same on both sides. So again, I've gone through both layers and come out through that loop. Now your little stitches keep them nice and close and even because remember this is what's holding our filling in. This is our actual seam and we're really going to pull those little stitches in nice and tight and I'm just going to be sewing that little binding stitch there you see and that's the same on the other side. I'm going to be stitching all the way up to that point there, right up to that little point which will match up with your little seam as we said before. So when we get up to the top here I'm going to show you how that I hide that little knot. So I've got to the top here and I'm going to put in my final stitch which will take me exactly to that little seam line. So straight through pull that one in and I like to sew that one twice just as I did at the base. Pull that nice and tight and now I'm going to hold that one over my finger and I'm just going to take my needle under my stitch. You can see that there, it's coming under that stitch and then I'm going to take my needle through my little loop and make a little knot there. So I've got a nice little knot there close to the edge and now I can just take my needle and just tuck it in just into the felt along that seam is fine. Pull that one through decided to get a little knot now. Okay, pull that one through and encourage that little knot in nice and tight and because that will be inside we can just snip that one off there and we will have, we will continue of course when we sew that uh, little roof line in and we'll have a nice clean finish here. So now all you need to do is repeat that process with the next one and then the next one and then the next one until you've got all of your little four sides. So remember each time we just go in at the base and come out and you'll find you can do that even when all of your sides are uh, almost together. There's still plenty of room for, for working on, the, on, on that little seam. So if you put them all together in exactly the same way and we will come back when we've got our little house sitting up. There we go, our little four sides are done, our little house is starting to take shape, so exciting to see it come together. Okay, so our next step now, before we sew up our little roof, is we've got to add our base. So I've got my base all glued up just as I did before. You can see there, I've made sure I've got all of those edges. And I'm just going to drop that one in and you'll find it will fit nice and snug. It will just sit straight down in there. You want to really make sure that your little corners are pressed out. Turn it over, make sure that base is fully glued on the base. And again, we're going to have a little bit of drying time. So we don't want that to move when we do our next steps. So pop that one aside to dry and we'll come back to it. So now I've got my, my little base is all dry now and we can start sewing in our little roof section which we're going to do all in one piece. We're actually going to go 
right the way across so you can see as I did before I've come in from the inside of my little house and I've just hid my knot in here and I've come out between my two layers here right on the corner where I finished off and we're just going to start and what we're going to do is we are going to sew the same blanket stitch from here up to here but we're going to stop just a little way from that point just maybe about three millimeters from the top of that point and you'll see that you've got a little probably about four millimeters of seam allowance extending beyond that that's good that we need that because that's how we do the top of our little roof so again it's just a matter of making sure when you put that first stitch in again I like to sew two stitches there pop our needle through both layers and we're going to just pull that one in remember this is a focal point of our little project so make sure those layers are nicely met up give that a nice tug and then we're just going to continue on just as we did before and again even though it's all boxed out and it's got that support in it it's really quite easy to keep those edges together because it's so structured so and it really keeps everything even as well it's very hard to get it wrong so you can see I'm going to continue just as I did and work all the way up to the top there once I get up to the top here I'm going to show you how to switch over so to start sewing down this side so I've got to the end here and this is my last stitch so I've still got my seam allowance at the top and I finished just a few millimeters from the end so I've put one stitch in and I'm going to do a second one straight over the top of it pull that one in then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to dive back into that little hole making sure I'm not catching that back fabric so I'm in the right position to line up the other side now the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to make sure that my top seam is matched up so I know where to put my needle in and I'm going to pull that little section out you can see that there I've got my top seam matched up so I can go back into that same hole and come out through the other side and that links that little top section nice and tight together so I'm going to do another stitch straight over the top of that one So now that's really anchored in that top section there and you can see that our other side just fits beautifully so all we need to do is carry on just as we did before with that same stitch and we'll be finishing up in the same way where we hide our little knot we dive in and we hide our little knot inside just as we did with this section here so I'm going to make my way down to there and then I'm going to repeat that process with the back one so now I have my little roof all stitched ready for our little top seam to be done once we've filled our little cottage so how we fill this um, is a matter of choice now it doesn't need any weight but if you like a little pin cushion with weight which I definitely do I don't like them to move around um, I'm going to add a little bit of weight by adding some rice so because I've got that base in there I can just pour my rice straight in there now if you're concerned with rice getting uh, not staying dry um, where I live is very very dry and so that's not a problem but you can throw in a little silica pouch these I tend to keep these they come when you buy shoes and all sorts of 
packaging I always keep them and save them because they're a little they absorb moisture so I can just throw that one in there and tuck that one in there in the rice and then I know that that will continue to keep everything nice and dry so there's there's just probably a, a, about a cap full in all that I've put in there of my rice you can make it as weighty as you like you could use I've used fine aquarium gravel before and that works really well um, so whatever you like so now we're going to start with our polyester filling you can see I'm using my forceps and I'm going to push everything right down nice and tight into those corners because I really want to push those out and you'll be surprised how much filling this little cottage can take turning it around and making sure that I'm evenly packing out those four corners so our little shape stays nice and squared up and the other area that you need to watch too as you're filling are these little corners here you want to make sure that they're nicely pushed out as well and once we get to the top also this top section so that we can pull this one nice and straight we will get a little rounded finish here with a little dip um, but we want to make it as tight as we can and this is where our pins are going in so we want to, that to be quite firm so keep packing that one until you get right up to the top and I'll show you how that I use my felting needle to really compress those fibres so I've got my filling right up to the top there and it's all quite firm and now I'm going to take my felting needle which is just a wool felting needle it's used for making felted wool uh, little animals and things but I use it for compacting stuffing so you can see what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pinch that top in just the way it will be when I stitch it and I can really compact that filling nice and flat just the way that I want it to sit and it also helps with keeping those fibers out of the way when we're sewing that final blanket stitch seam gather up all your loose little fibers and if you really pinch that in it just helps flatten that little roof section just a little bit once you've got it where you want it just check it because we want it to be quite full once we've done that stitch we want it to bounce back out at us so I think that'll be just about right so all we need to do now is stitch our top section so here I've got my pearl thread again single strand with a knot in the end and we're going to sew up this little top seam so what I do is I come in from behind and I just come out on that little point and then I can tuck that little one in tuck that little point in and catch it between those two layers and my first stitch I actually do across the front Just to try and get that all as neat and tidy as possible so my one little stitch goes across the front there my second stitch is going to go right on the corner so I'm going to place it right on that corner and then we can start making our way across the top there we go so that's given us a nice little corner your little polyester fibers can be trimmed off later so now I just have a look at it and make sure that it's all going to tuck in nicely you can actually put a little one of your little if you've got your little wonder clips and clip that side just so the easing it all in nicely as you go and keep your stitches nice and even 
and make sure they're deep enough and you find what we're going to be doing we want to try and cover that little white core of the interfacing with our stitch by placing that little binding stitch along the top so I'm just going to make my way right across to the other side and finish off and tuck in that little end just as I did there and as you're sewing across there you can always add a little bit more filling to get into those little top points as you go because your little stitching will hold everything together so it's just pop your little forceps in and slide it up to that top front corner so we're getting a nice little peak there and the same with this corner you can tuck a little bit more in before you just finish that off and there I have my little roof seam all done and my last step is just to add my little eaves so I'm going to go ahead and take that one to my hot glue gun and I am going to hot glue that one exactly into place on that seam line so right across there making sure making sure that nothing is showing there and run a line of glue just across there press that one into place and that is our final little finished little cottage little trim glued on there it's all very secure and you can add any little trim that you like I feel like making a whole village I can't wait to see all the colors that everybody comes up with I want somebody to make one somebody please make one as a traditional cream with the little thatched roof a little English country cottage would be absolutely gorgeous well, I'm building quite a collection of pin cushions now let's have a look at them all together Wow, that's quite the little collection coming along and there's so many more to come, I promise you. So how about you check out my playlist and you can find all of these lovelies on there and uh, make up a collection of pin cushions of your own. I hope you've enjoyed making my little cottage pin cushion. Well, thank you all for joining me today. I hope you all had a lot of fun. I did. I certainly had fun designing this one. So. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you can send me pictures of your finished little creations. And I want to see, I always want to see something different, I know. I, I want to see little houses now. I want to see all the little different colours. And can somebody please make it up in gingerbread colours so I get to see that. Some little icing on the top and candy canes. I don't know, just go with it. Um, so looking forward to those. If you send me pictures, of course, I can pin them on a Pinterest board I've made just for you all and the board you're looking for is called you made it and uh, our board is getting lovely and full it's a really positive little community you can see what everybody else is doing with my patterns so follow me on pinterest and check that one out and don't forget to subscribe because so many patterns coming up what's coming up i think at the moment i'm looking at cushion covers i'm very excited about creating and designing some new cushion covers for you all i already had a have a few on my playlist you can check those out but in the meantime there's some more new ones coming all sorts of exciting patterns that maybe you haven't seen before coming up so but most of all everybody remember all of the good things that come to you in your day make sure that you share them make sure that you pay them forward until next time it's Hiru from me